What is good? We're back for another edition of the FF Dynasty. How you doing today, Jay? Well, look at you with the shirt on. Look at you. Should actually, have these for actually, sale. I think I got a little. Look at me. Look at us both. Sure. That was a, what a coincidence. That's that's an exclusive. That is an exclusive. You can't get that one. No. Pocket tea. You might be able to get this one soon. We'll hit you with a link in the bio. Yeah. Got a little partner deal with our sponsor, uh, Revelry Brewing. Going to have shirts for sale on the website. I got to talk to them about their pops. Real soon. Yeah. Could we you get some cans with a good pop. Make a make a beer just for us called The Pop. Mm. 10 out of 10. Highly carbureted. 9.98. Highly carbonated. Always giving us a good pop. You can't have a, a even number on the grade. No. So today, we're back with another rookie uh, breakdown for fantasy football purposes, not for uh, film grade for a pro scouting deal here. Shout out to the comment section. It's just a couple of clowns drinking beer. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? Fine. Keep the comments coming. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Who you want to see next. What you want to see next. Uh, like, dislike. So today, we got Jamison Williams mm. from ended up at Alabama, 6'2", 189, 20 years old. Uh, will be 21 relatively soon in the next month or two from Cardinal Ritter Prep uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, a four-star recruit and had offers from 40-plus schools, including Ohio State, Bama, Oregon, Auburn, Arkansas, UCLA. You just saw the clip there of what he was doing to some SEC defenses uh, when he mm. finally got a shot. Torching them. Um, he did unfortunately suffer an ACL tear in the national championship game, which is a huge bummer. We'll Terrible. Kind of circle That's back to that. That's why they should that. sit out. <laughs> yeah. Kind of circle back to that at the end. Um, but ultimately, in the beginning of this thing, he did choose Ohio State as his initial uh, stomping grounds there. But, you know, really never got anything going on the field. Did get some snaps, but... You know, didn't really tr translate into anything, uh, any any great production. So transfers after two years of, of really not having much production. So is that a big flag for you? Could it, why couldn't he get on the field? Why couldn't he make an impact? Or how stay? Well, so it's not. It's going to make the breakout age not good. And I know ah. some people look at that, um, which is which is fine. Uh, but th there is a re you know he didn't couldn't get much burn. And you know, I guess because there was studs, I guess you right? could debate. You could debate that a little bit. He was getting snaps, but wasn't getting targets. I read somewhere that there was a game where they were missing Olave and maybe Wilson or somebody else, and he's and Will, Jameson still couldn't get any run. But it's just like, look, man, he he put up a body of work at Alabama quickly. So, right, I right mean, off the shit, rip. Shit Shout out just to the happened. transfer we've, portal. Right, we've we've talked to that. We, Similar we've to talked, Kenneth Kenny Three Sticks. We, we've talked about this with. Kenneth Walker. Hit the transfer portal, boom, Heisman candidate. Burrow couldn't play at Ohio State. Like, Justin Fields wasn't playing at at, um, at Georgia. Georgia. Um, you know, so there's just been, um, you know, some players that, for whatever reason, misevaluation, or you thought the guy in front of him was a little better, had a little more juice for what you were doing, and, you know, it just doesn't work out. But like you said, Speak, he, Speaking of juice, he calls himself the juice man. The juice which, man. I'm not a fan of calling yourself yeah, you anything. Can't, you can't give yourself anything. Yeah. But, so, but he definitely has the juice. Maybe that's um, why they didn't like him at Ohio State. Maybe so. <laughs> um, but he does enter, enter the transfer portal, like you said, heads to Alabama, and then you see an instant uh, strong production or breakout, if you will. Uh, kind of cue the, the analytics here. Uh, had Anal a dominator rating, 31.1%. And ah. your, your, your 35%, I guess, is like the... the King Dingaling or Bor was um, like the minimum for and being good. Twenty to twenty to thirty four or thirty five is is you know going to be could be really good and you know has a chance to to really accelerate. Uh, so he's right in that in that range, not quite at the at the top threshold you want to see. Like you said, breakout age twenty point four fiftieth which, percentile, which you know there is. He sure didn't break out at Ohio State. As soon as he transfers, though, you know, Boom, break you don't out. always quite get it right. Everybody gets things wrong. I mean, right. so Ohio State didn't get it right. They, they are stacked, like you said. Then Jigba's behind him. They have, like, the number one 2022 guy. They have Marvin Harrison's son. They had Olave, who came back for another year. They had Garrett Wilson, who very well could be the first receiver off the board this year. Um, you know, so just a, just a crazy – Brian Hartline, shout out to him, just crushing that receiver room over at Ohio State. Sure. Uh, but, you know, comes Alabama and immediately crushes his, his yards per reception, 93rd percentile, <gasps> almost at 20 there, 19.9. Um, target share, 20.7. dot 
14.5. ADOT's bad, but the yards per catch are good. That's... Yards per route run, 3.12 uh, over the entire season, including the playoffs, so that's good for 13. I guess ADOT's not that bad, but they hit him. We'll get to it, but they hit him with a lot of short stuff on top yeah, of going on deep. on top of some big ones. Going real deep. And I did a little bit more digging. Shout out to the comment section. Someone asked where we get the metrics and how do you, is, is the dominator for a single season or – most recent season or a career um did some looking into it it is i believe for the career shout out to matt foreman at matt at fat mormon hit him up he said that uh it's for the career i thought it was probably your best season but it's for overall so that makes sense why the dominator wouldn't be that good he did not dominate well dominator's still Ohio really State. good but one year propped him up to the 50th percentile 55th so uh, so so Strong, strong in a lot of those categories that 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 deal with one year of being awesome because he was he was really awesome. Ninth in regular season or yards with twelve hundred and fifty nine, three point eleven in, in yards per route run. Let's go for seventeenth. These are regular season numbers, and then second in touchdowns with thirteen. Right, and I, I we got some more stats here, and I took them. These are these are straight facts. This is, this is one hundred. Um, but Casey disagrees. He th- he doesn't think I should include the regular the regular season and the postseason. So he he played three extra games than, than a lot of prospects it's, would. It's right? not that you it's not that you shouldn't include them. You just probably shouldn't rank them against other guys. It's not it's, fair to everyone else that he get played th- right. in a in a SEC championship game. Obviously, two playoff games, which he did miss a decent amount of that second one with the ACL tear. Still had, I believe, like four for sixty or something yeah. like that. Uh, and didn't have a great game against Cincinnati in the first playoff game, but crushed it in the SEC championship game, six for 175 and two or something like that. So numbers might be a little inflated here, but good overall stats uh, to do to have that many yards with just 78 receptions is pretty incredible. Um, the yards per reception and touchdowns are incredible. The yeah, which not the biggest missed tackle forcer breaker, right? But Getting a ton of yak because when the ball's in his hands, it's hard to catch him. So if you right. can't catch him, you don't yeah. have to break tackles if you're not right. being caught. Right. Uh, so ton of yak, even though maybe a little bit inflated with that SEC championship game. Nothing much in the contested catch range. You know, four contested catches. That's not very many. Uh, but some you can see it looks okay. Doesn't get contested a lot. My man's open, right. I guess, uh, is what I would take from that. What you, what you got? Uh, not much. We'll touch on some of that as we kind of go through, you know, watching the film, our takeaways of, of what this guy does and, and how he plays and then, you know, where we kind of how we feel about him at the end here. So uh, let's jump right into that. Uh, I will say my first impression of watching the all 22s, my a big takeaway was that it would appear that maybe Mechie is being underrated right now. Because if you're watching all those all 22s, it seemed that Mechie did a lot of dirty work Number eight's for Alabama. Number popping off a lot. And, and and you're like, Who's popping off. Right? So oh, right, Mechie. Definitely. Maybe not, a, why, not sure why he doesn't get. I think he's he's injured too. And, sure. Um, but it seems like he may be a little underrated right now. He was looking pretty strong out there. Um, but back to the juice, man. Um, he's going to keep you nervous all game. Yeah. You I have mean, one slip up and it's six. He posted the FBS best 11 touchdowns with of 30 yards or more in 2021. It feels like he's about to score on almost it's almost like a it's almost like a letdown if he doesn't score. Right. You know, you feel he's you're watching those all 22s, you get to watch him go deep. He goes deep a fair amount and he's getting behind guys and like there's plays where they could have thrown him the ball, he was open but they didn't, you know, it was just and he scored 15 touchdowns most of them being pretty deep and it's just like you're on the edge of your fucking seat right this man's about to break this game open for sure i i would say that he has a way of just ruining games right um for the opposing defense he's either crushing your dreams of beating alabama by having a big play at the times when they really need something or he's just crushing your soul by putting an exclamation point and furthering the margin. Right. Um, just some examples in, of both of those. In the Mississippi State game this year, two catches for 77 yards and a touchdown. It's basically one play. He does all that damage of 77 yards, and it's coming right out of half. It's 21-6. Williams takes it to the house on a huge play. Um, just really breaking Mississippi State's uh, back there. Texas A&M, he puts the team on his back. Big play on a double move. Uh, then for some reason, no one's covering him on the second touchdown. But then he adds the two-point conversion in that game uh, on a dirty little move um, and, and really brings them back in that Texas A&M game. They do, they do end up uh, losing to Texas A&M. Uh, but 
still he plays a big role in in, in fighting and and keeping that game competitive. Arkansas multiple big plays to get Bam out of trouble, uh, big ones, and then the SEC championship again two big plays to kind of get Bama off and rolling. Obviously, the end of that game the score isn't indicative, but he kind of he kind of gets them rolling. And and at the end of those kind of things, a lot of those moves stem from some double moves and those right. double moves are dirty dog yeah you you mentioned it the the double moves like he just what's the word you use for it? he's snappy you're about to get to yeah. that and like yeah, he snaps yeah. that but like just the little hesitation and i mean if right. you bite it all if you make any mistake 100 percent crushing souls on those double moves right and and what what i did like what bama was doing is they they kept him involved underneath they they hit him with shallow crossers. They hit him with curls and they sent comebacks. Him in motion behind the line of scrimmage. Right. They a ton. gave him. They gave him like little hook routes that he would hook up in a little zone and and keep him involved underneath, making him much harder to guard and keeping a defense honest is is really going to give somebody with Williams traits. You're really going to get the most out of him when you do stuff like that. And like you said, he does a really really good job of selling making his cell routes be look like the real ones. And he's snappy in those in those kind of movements when he's breaking things off. Um, and he, he sells it really well in those double moves, whether, you know, how, however he's selling his double moves, whether it's a hitch and go or uh, a multitude of different moves in those doubles. He's he is he seems very snappy in that where he's selling and making it look just like he's actually going to make that move. But then he keeps it moving. And obviously, you know, if he if he gets you out of phase at any point, it's it's a wrap. I mean, he's he's really strong. And then again, I think he does a good job with tempo. He knows how to um, he knows how much speed he has, and he does a great job of of using his tempo to kind of create separation. Some fast guys will get caught up and and just trying to overpower guys with the speed. Right. But he does a really good job of not doing. He doesn't show you the speed every play. Like he just he could lull you to sleep for a minute, and then he's gone. Right, there's even some of that where his release move almost like he's about to block, but then cuts it upfield. Would you say the change of direction is pretty strong? Um, I would say at times it's pretty strong. I mean, that's not my favorite thing. I, I think I think he's mostly more of a of a of a linear kind of guy, and I, you know, I saw a couple people say that, and I would agree that that's definitely his best uh, strength. I think he's. I think the snappiness is one of my favorite things about him when he runs those other routes. But um, I'll take the linear guy. Yeah. It's the best thing to be the best at. Um, but his ability to separate seems imminent. Um, right. If you give him enough time, he's going to get free. He's that fast. And then, you know, if you paired him with an off schedule quarterback, I think he the quarterback would really benefit from him as well as Williams benefiting from the quarterback being able to, you know, extend a play and you know it's kind of a symbiotic relationship if you will we talked about this with dk metcalf like he didn't have a big route tree i'm not saying that williams doesn't have a big route tree but you paired him with russell wilson like good luck governing that guy on a you know for more than a few seconds and same thing with with a jameson williams here like really really tough to cover a guy with that much speed um for any amount of elongated time um so and i would say he does run more routes in dk yeah 100 sure. percent for yeah. sure um Definitely not too interested in a lot of contact. Um, the mm -hmm. blocking is less than ideal on on most things. Yeah, um, he's not even mad about it. It's just a little upset that the, his man just blew him up yeah. and made the tackle. He was clearly supposed to block for that outside underneath route or whatever, and his man just gets past him. And I don't even see like a, I don't even see like a. Dang it! I really fucked up. Like nah. they're gonna get me on film with this tomorrow because he, he just doesn't. It doesn't seem like he cares that much. No, nah, he's gonna do damage in other ways. And right. He, which, you know, going to have to clean that up a little bit and do a little bit more of that. Well, there um, might be some coaches who don't want to fuck with him, right? Like some coaches in the NFL need some block. Like Sean McVay needs his wide receivers to block. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, the boys, they want their wide receivers blocking. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I'd say, we'll see. We'll see. Speed, though, um, is what really right. matters, huh? The, the game-breaking ability and explosive plays is another thing that matters to those guys a lot. So, yeah, he can do that. But the um, tackle-breaking, they also like, and there's yeah. not a ton of that. Like you said, doesn't like contact. Not very many missed forced tackles. What was the stat? No, pretty low. In, uh, in not that, that I mean, many. Nine, I think. Uh, Twelve, Twelve total. Well, that was just for last year. Uh, so, you know, 
the contested catches again an area that that he looked like you know a little bit of a weakness for contested catches which is is pretty low i don't even know if that rated against anybody else i went down 200 yeah and i couldn't find his name then i put in a um and what you know not a whole lot of strong arming or body and going on but but like you said the argument can be made that he is so fast that he's not in that situation and he hasn't found himself in that situation a tons. And I think that's fair, um, but he's definitely not, you know, a, a strong competitor uh, in traffic uh, at the catch point, all those kind of things. There are a few examples in that Texas A&M game. He has a pretty big catch with two guys kind of converging yeah. on him. Um, but definitely not the area of of strength where you're like man that 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 dude, that dude's strong you get down in the red zone you know he's gonna body you up uh, but you know right we're gonna do david bell next perhaps and he you know he is crushing red zone and contested catches right uh but not as much in the speed right. game right i mean so, Traylon burks what's your favorite right pick your poison right well, Traylon then, has some contested right that's what i'm saying like big, big time speed, right. not quite the same speed like just a much bigger build pick your poison pick your flavor of how you like your guys right. um and you know the yak like we talked about uh the numbers are good 555 yards in the regular season that's good for 10th um but i'm not sure that's necessarily indicative of his game i don't find him especially slippery necessarily no, as far some, as some ball missed, in his hands like some missed tackles for his 12 <laughs> but you know yeah i mean certainly not in the burks or wilson category with ball in hand but but if you don't take the right angle right it's separation you're done you hit him on the move and then he has another gear ball in the air or running away from guys right um so you know that obviously converts into some big yak plays if you catch him in the right scenarios and it's certainly not a bad thing i'm just saying that it's, it's all yak isn't necessarily created equally but he's probably going to get his and his yak should be high. Like when we did a guy like Olave, his yak wasn't actually necessarily as high as you thought it might be. Um, but um, even even on the shorter stuff where they schemed him, you know, if, you, if he's got a little lane, he's he's, he's so quick and down, fast. He, he, right? He's going to go and, and it's 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 hard to catch him. Um, so just not necessarily shitting on the yak by any means, but I'm just pointing out that it, it is, may, you know, all yak is not necessarily created equally fair. Um, but again, explosive plays and and the shit that he does for your team in yeah, big times like, and the like, pressure it, he puts on your defense and the the sweatiness that entails on on the defensive end uh, for everybody trying to stop him game in game out play in play out uh, you right. know is is, is a I, whole nother factor. I heard Mel Kuyper say something that I didn't quite agree with, but I I kind of see a little bit more now diving into Jameson. You know he Alabama won the SEC championship game and then they got beat pretty decently in the in the national championship game just a few weeks later mm -hmm. but they didn't have jameson for most of that game and kuiper was like if they had jameson for that game he would they would have won almost is what he said and i was like i don't right. know if they'd have won but looking at jameson like not having to account for that guy right. how much more would you sleep than like and no mechie either right you just like right totally different game when you don't have totally to worry about game. that guy he, on he, every single fucking play because he, he was off to a good good game he had already crushed georgia in the sec championship for like 170 and and two yeah. i think maybe or, or yeah, something along those lines and two, i think on six catches just and, and outrunning their fastest guy like right. it, he's pulling away it's insane right. he's how doing fast he's doing is. this in the sec again we talked this about Traylon. these are going to be some of the faster guys in the nation that you're and and he's running past a lot of those guys um one last little note is is maybe saying that that once you manned up and and pressed him at times it, it could have gave him a little trouble but again plenty of examples of him getting free there isn't a whole lot of examples of that of, of that happening in college it just doesn't happen that much but it definitely could be something as you move forward a bigger stronger defensive back that knows how to play in the nfl maybe gives him trouble um so a lot of his big plays come where he's they're off free release man and, and he has free release but then he's going to eat plays, up a cushion 100 percent. right but then and, and and if they do and when they played off of him they hit him with a lot of short right. stuff to uh, make yeah pay. yeah but then you know there there's definitely times of him beating man or, or tight man coverage maybe not press i don't know if press is technically they put his hands on him or not not a ton of press in college in general more in the sec um florida manned him up in tight coverage and, and gave him fits held him to one of his worst games uh like four, four, four for 60, 60 which yeah. if that's your worst day still pretty damn good but then there's also times in that game when he was open in man coverage he wasn't getting it thrown his way but right. they, they right. did to your credit give him fits and and contain him of sorts but 
you're just not gonna contain. You're just not gonna contain him for that long. No, you know? it's it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. I mean, obviously, you don't know where he's gonna end up in the NFL here. I don't know that you necessarily just want to go ahead and line him up outside all the time at the next level. He played 27.8 percent uh, out of the slot, and he played 72 uh, percent out wide. So it's 116 to 300 watt 301 uh, snaps between the two. Um, so, you know, obviously he was still doing damage out wide, but there was a lot of times where on those sh- shallow hook hook uh, plays that he was running and shallow crosses where he would be in more of a slot role. And, and it, you could see like when he was in that slot role, it was like, oh, shit, what's right. about to happen? Because he can't like, get on him. Right. Really. There's not too many pressing the slot receivers. So that's definitely right. a way to get him a, a, a little bit more of a release and he gets someone creative enough. It right. could really gel well. And, you know, I, I think I think that that should be where people are. There, I don't know how many guys even really in the NFL are only strictly playing out wide at this point anyway. Like definitely some a lot of guys moving around um, and, and at least playing a margin like he's played at Alabama. Um, a little 70, for the most 30 part. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it would be dumb not to in in the league to move guys around and get matchups that, that are um, beneficial to your player um that's just that's just bad bad job of of using the personnel that you have and getting the matchup it's basically a matchup game and this guy can be a matchup nightmare and 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 a game breaker and and like i said i think he's he does a great job of of making everybody on the field super nervous and he can absolutely just fucking ruin a game um so with all that being said i think i'm more in like than in love with jameson williams Um, yeah i i do you love him, you just not in love with him, or right. you like that, him, that you're old, just not you know, in love with him. It's not you, it's me. Yeah, um, kind of deal. Um, What's holding you back? Just, just the overall picture. Like, I mean, I think he could be great, and maybe I'll eat these words, but like, I, I'd still taken a good handful of people in front of him. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't be like, oh, the, you know, there's no way I would take Jamison Williams. And now, maybe with the ACL, maybe he does get a little bit of a discount. It's not like I would go out of my way not to draft him. Um, but I wouldn't go out of my way to put him at the at the very front of my list. Um, as we're going through this and getting further and further, we'll start building rankings on Patreon, um, as well as you know we're building tiers and figuring out where these guys fit in those tiers as well. So, um, getting closer and closer to being able to do a mock draft and figuring out where we have all these guys. There's certainly a range of outcomes for this guy. I would I, you know I would probably say I like a Waddle and a Devonta Smith more than I liked him coming out. Um, He's certainly better than a Henry Ruggs mm-hmm. um, that has more going on in his game. Could he get drafted that high or probably not because of the I mean, ACL, I guess? I mean, probably not in general. I don't know how many receivers are going to get drafted that high right now. I and mean, I, I just, Adam Slate. Some, that was some also the had Raiders the doing. Number one. Tr- yeah, I think without the ACL. I think Not the, overall, but the first wide right, receiver. Right, and, and I think some people still have him in the one, two, or three. We talked to Angelo a while ago who would have had him at his number one. I'd be interested to talk to him again at some point and see where he's at. For sure. Um, and, and, you know, is, is a pretty good mover. Um, I know that's a that's a big Angelo uh, trait and and look like I said what do you like what's your what's your poison what's your style what do you like you know I like this the guy one play if guys. Big Co is here like this the- is a Big Co guy for yeah. sure I, Big Co is def- would definitely be in love with Jameson Williams you know I, I don't this that's not that I'm, I'm not trying to hate on the guy by any means um, you're in you love him you just aren't in love right. I, I like him a lot. I just I, I think I still got you know a, a solid group in front of him. That's that could be that's fair. You know, I, but I, I could also see being excited if he fell and you could take him. Like, I'd be pretty. It seems like a fun swing. I just, to I just put on don't your think team. he's gonna fall because I think he's he's just he's got all this luster kind of around him, and I think he's gonna stay up in a lot of bigger draft kind of circles and and more mainstream names and and be up there with what he did in this one year at Alabama so I'm not sure that there's gonna be value but if the ACL does create a little value I like him a whole lot more Mm -hmm. um so yeah you got any closing thoughts on on old Jameson Williams here uh I like you (laughs) no I'm good man uh this is fun I'm I knew he was going to be excited. I knew he was going to be an exciting player. And, right. Uh, I, he certainly was. He didn't disappoint in that in that regard. I just 
There's I could see taking the little swing, man, towards the end of the first, which maybe he doesn't fall. Oh, there, he's you know? definitely he's he's going to be a a top five player, top, top five. six player, I think. I don't well, know. The hype could build. I could get in love with him. I could I could fall in love with him all over if again. If there if he could be at the combine and do it, I, he would he would just that stock that would might be, help actually. That stock would be pretty high. Might help his stock out for us not having him. Not gonna help his stock out, but potentially. Who who knows? He might not even run the forty. Just be like, look at the fucking tape. That's what Lamar did. Yeah. But wide receivers kind of do. Oh, need he would to. definitely run that forty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you all joining us. Uh, we'll be coming with some more rookie breakdowns. We hit some offseason trade targets. I know we've been saying that a lot, but it is coming. Uh, Hit that bio in the link in the bio for the t-shirt. We'll see you next week. Peace.